Do you remember back when we were talking about oxidation? We said that if you have a primary alcohol, this can be oxidized up to the aldehyde and that this can then be oxidized further to the carboxylic acid, right? On the other hand, so that's primary alcohols, if we have a secondary alcohol, we said that you can oxidize this once up to the ketone, but that oxidation was uh, not further possible because, um, because the, there's no alpha proton to, to oxidize anymore. So secondary uh, alcohols can't be oxidized past the carbonyl uh, stage. Well, I lied. They actually can be oxidized further by a very special uh, type of process known as the bayer villiger reaction. Okay. Uh, this is a somewhat peculiar looking process to be sure, but it has uh, definite utility. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take a ketone and I'll just pick cyclohexanone and we're going to treat it with our old friend MCPBA. Okay, This is the reagent that you use to epoxidize alkenes. In this case, we're going to treat a ketone with MCPBA and what will happen is we will oxidize that ketone to this uh, structure, which is an ester, or in the case of it's cyclic, it's called a lactone. Okay? So you can see we've basically inserted an oxygen between those two carbons. Very weird, right? But very useful as well. So how in the world does this work? Well, first what we're going to do is to take a carbonyl, Right, so uh, a ketone, sorry. And what we're going to do in this case is to use the per acid to deprotonate the uh, to to protonate the carbonyl. So uh, that carbonyl is going to get protonated by the per acid. And I'm just just uh, describing the per acid uh, just generically with R uh, in this case instead of drawing out the um, the metachloral substituent. Okay, so that leads to this type of intermediate. We've got our oxocarbenium ion, and then we've got our per acid anion that we just generated. So that can then add to the oxocarbenium ion. So again, all I did was I, I protonated the carbonyl with that per acid, and then I had the anion add to the, to the oxycarbenium ion. So formally, I added this reagent, this H acid, across the, the double bond. Now, the next step I'm going to do in a concerted way, and that's going to be allow us to, to take care of our, our proton. Now, it's uh, likely that this... Uh, doesn't happen with the proton transfer in the way that I'm going to describe it, but I don't care. We're going to talk about it this way because it, it allows us to not generate any charged intermediates, which makes me very happy, okay? And it'll just cut down on the amount of work that we have to do to draw this mechanism. Um, so if you go search for this anywhere else, you're likely to see um, a slightly different mechanism, but the key part uh, where, we, where we do this, um, this uh, rearrangement is, is the same, and so that's the, really the part that we care about. So what's going to happen in the, in the key part of this mechanism uh, is that we're going to have the uh, electrons from this oxygen push down, okay? They're gonna push down, and now we're used to seeing the, um, the heteroatom piece of this tetrahedral intermediate leave. But that would just take us back here, and obviously that's not what happens. So although we're used to seeing that, we're actually going to do something different. All right? And the, the reason we're going to do something different is because we have this very weak oxygen-oxygen bond, which would really like to break. It's not very happy. It would really like to break. And the way that it can break 
is if we push the electrons down and we have a shift of one of these carbon-carbon bonds, we shift that from carbon over to oxygen, we can kick off this whole group. So this is, it has some similarities to the Beckman rearrangement um, in that there's this one-two shift with the expulsion of a group, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the electrons from this OH bond, I'm gonna push them down, okay? And then I'm gonna have this group here migrate onto that oxygen. So it's just a one-two shift from carbon to oxygen, and that's actually going to displace that oxygen. So we're breaking this very weak OO bond and we're forming a much stronger CO bond. But if I push these electrons up here, then I can take these electrons and actually grab that proton. Okay, so this is the part, the proton grabbing that may or may not happen, um, but I like it because then I don't have to draw any charged intermediates. Okay, so there's a lot that's going on here, but if you just pay attention to what bonds broke and which ones formed, we just generated a carbonyl here. We had R2 migrate over to the oxygen. Okay, so we formed that bond. And then this was the leaving group, carbonyl there, O, we grab the proton, and there's our metachloroplenol substituent. So you see how that happened? We, we were able to lose a neutral acid, and we just migrated one of the groups from carbon to oxygen, and we formed this ester group. Pretty nifty, right? Okay, so we would tend to draw the ester just slightly different. It's completely irrelevant. Um, we would usually draw this as our end product just in this, this sort of confirmation, but that that's uh, meaningless really. All right, so bayer villiger reaction, um, kind of a bizarre looking thing, but it now allows us to take a ketone and go to an ester or, or the cyclic version, which is called a lactone. Okay, and it just treat with MCPBA. Okay, so one note about selectivity. So the, uh, in general, the, the more highly substituted carbon, the more highly substituted is the one that will migrate. Okay. Um, so let me give you an example here. If I have the following ketone, okay, all right, it's unsymmetrical. On this side, I've just got a methylene, and over here, I've got a, a methine, so a, you know, a tertiary carbon. Um, and so there are two potential bayer villiger products um, that we could potentially get, but what we will see is if we treat this with MCPBA, uh, the, the product that we'll get is where the more highly substituted carbon did the migration. Okay. So this is the carbon here that migrates onto the oxygen. So see, that's the one that's now attached to oxygen. And we don't get the alternative product from the other side. All right, so that would be the alternative product and we don't get that one. All right, we only get the, the one where the more substituted carbon um, transferred. And then also um, phenyl, Phenyl always migrates. In preference to an alkyl. Okay, so so aromatic rings are really good at, at migrating in a in a Bayer Villiger, and I'll just give you one one simple example of this selectivity. So let's say I had this ketone with a phenyl on one side and an isopropyl on the other, and if I treat this with MCPBA, what I will get here. this ester right so we can see that the, we now actually have a, a phenolic ester instead of the where we still have the the benzylic ketone and the isopropyl uh, change so this is this is really the only product that comes out of this so the aryl groups the the, the phenyl rings are, are much more prone to uh, to do that migration than the the alkyl groups okay 
All right, so this is admittedly a weird reaction, um, but you might uh, look at the mechanisms for the bayer villiger and for the, um, the Beckman rearrangement and see that they have some similarities in the sense that you're um, generating a, a leaving group um, and then a, a carbon is migrating um, to, to kick off that leaving group and doing um, sort of an expansion type of chemistry.